electors fairly <laughs> vigorously because it, they're not 100% they're not efficient. Um, but, you know, we can do that. Um, okay, so anyway, that's the machine. We have this, we have this gadget that, that can intercept the, um, the sunlight and uh, do cute things with it. Okay, part two. Why do I think that it's very likely to be built, given that I think that it can be built? First thing is global catastrophic risk. There's a lot of people that are worried about things like global warming. There's other people that are worried about ice ages. Um, there are people who are worried about asteroids. If you take the asteroid apophis that, that was just spoken of earlier, you remember that, that how this is going to work is that in 2029, it's going to come within the orbit of the moon, passing the Earth. Um, and uh, that's going to be sort of like a butterfly effect incident where um, it's fairly difficult to predict exactly what's going to happen to it after that uh, close encounter. Okay. Once, once it gets past that, we'll know. But actually, our computers are good enough that, that once it gets close, we'll be able to, to, to know pretty well. Um, well, in 2029, if, if this ha happens to be built by then, which is, hmm, who knows. Um, but if it, if it does happen to be built by then, even, even the simple mirror version, okay, what, what we can do is, as it comes tumbling past, we can focus the entire Earth's worth of sunlight on it and give it a kick, all right? And this is probably a lot more appropriate in the case of Apophis than, than many other um, asteroids because it's going to be so close and a little tiny kick will have a huge result in 36 when it comes back and, and might actually be hitting. Um, but a fairly minor kick in 29, um, you know, just, just basically by uh, um, hitting it with an, enough light to, to blow out some material um, will probably be enough if it was going to be in that resonance keyhole to get it out. Okay, so um, that's one thing you could do with it. Uh, another catastrophic risk you could avert. Um, the second reason is that it's going to be extremely valuable. Um, if you read the IPCC num numbers on how much global warming is going to cost, uh, what they actually estimate is that over the rest of the century, um, it's going to be about 3% of the global um, uh, GDP. Well, if you could actually control the climate and tailor it and um, make lots of other places on, on the earth like northern Canada and Russia and, and so forth um, as valuable land as, as, as California is, um, the uh, effect on the global GDP would be enormous and it would, instead of being minus 3%, it might be plus 300%. Okay, so there's a huge amount of value to being able to control the weather. And so this is something people have always wanted to do and something that, therefore, they probably will do. Third, remember the power plant. What if it's not a power plant underneath this 1,000 square kilometers of uh, mirrors, but the you know, enemy ship or um, some city you didn't like or something like that? The, uh, another way of... Uh, specifying the, the amount of energy that, that would get pumped into that area is the effect of it exploding a one kiloton atom bomb every second for as long as you want it, okay? You can, and you could stir it around and so forth. Um, and you could uh, likewise focus the, uh, uh, the light on, on other things. Um, it doesn't really matter though whether you're, whether you're zapping things with, with your, your focus effect. If you can control the weather you're pretty much in charge, okay? Anybody that doesn't like you and, and, and starts, you know, rattling their sabers, you know, has 20 years of no summer, no growing season. Um, it, it's uh, a military engine second to none to be able to control the Earth's weather. Um, and for that reason alone, I think that given the, the technological capability of doing it, it will be done. Okay, well, part three. This is, this is actually the part I don't really know too well, um, which is the implications. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the first thing is, if you 
if you're a government and you and you want to start doing this, uh, you know, I mean, I, I I cannot see the U.S. government believing that this is possible and not doing it. I mean, just it's not in the nature of the beast, right? Um, in fact, I can't see several other governments also <laughs> not <laughs> being able to do it and and, and not doing it. Um, if if you're a uh, a smaller government that doesn't have enough conventional forces to, to defend yourself while, while this is being put up, um, I'm guessing that approximately 5% of it is all you would need to have a setting that was a dead man switch, where if they came and blew you up and you quit sending out the control signals, all of the, uh, the low balloons went into uh, snowball earth mode. And it would be a doomsday device. Um, so once, once somebody gets 5% of one built, um, you're stuck listening to them. Um, now, among other things, you, you can start building your own. And in fact, it seems reasonable to imagine that um, by later in the century, there are going to be several competing clouds of these things around. Um, and hopefully, they won't actually wind up physically competing with each other, but um, the people that are in charge of them will all sort of come to some negotiation and, and um, unfortunately it means that, that that's going to be all the more uh, reason for somebody to want to get in, in the game, okay, you know, you know, you have three billion balloons up and I have seven billion and, and this guy over there has two billion and, and you know, um, and so that means we get that many votes in, in the weather control world government, um, but uh, that's, actually I should just really throw it up into questions because um, uh, I, I can't come close to seeing all the uh, implications uh, that this will have, but I'm fairly sure A, that it's possible and B, that it will be done.